Hi and welcome back. So in this video, I'm going to define pivot positions of a matrix and talk about how they relate back to our consistent and inconsistent systems of linear equations. So let's start with our definition. A pivot position of a matrix is any first non-zero term of any non-zero row of that matrix. So this sounds pretty complicated, but the actual concept is pretty simple to identify. So we have this first non-zero term. We call this the leading term, and this is of any non-zero row. So we're looking at all the rows that have any sort of term in them that's not zero, and we're finding the first one starting from the left-hand side. So the first non-zero term is the leading term of that row. So let me show you some examples. I'll put four matrices here and let's identify the pivot positions. So in this first matrix, we have three rows and all of them have values. So we don't have any zero rows. And I wanna just circle the first non-zero term in each of those rows. So it's just these ones going down the diagonal. We have three pivot positions for this matrix and here they are. Then let's look at this matrix with two rows. So here, each of these rows has values in it. They are non-zero. And I'm seeing that it's these ones in each row that are the pivot positions. So the three and the five, those are like the second non-zero terms. Those aren't the first non-zero terms. And we typically do this in reduced row echelon form where we're going to be looking at ones. So as long as you're in reduced row echelon form, the values you're picking for your pivot positions are going to be ones. All right, let's look at this next matrix. So this has three rows. Here, our final row, our third row is all zeros. So that row is not going to have a pivot position. But in the first two rows, we have these ones, and so we have two pivot positions. Then in our last matrix here, this one is augmented as were the rest, but here we see in the final row, we have this one on the right-hand side, so in the augmented part. So the first two rows are normal, we can see those pivot positions. Then in the third row, we have this odd one on the right-hand side, and so we actually technically call this a pivot position. So there are zeros and then a one, this is a non-zero row. And so even though that one is on the augmented part of the matrix, it's still a pivot position. You can notice that this is going to be an inconsistent system since we have zero equals one, but more on that later. Now I just want to make some conclusions and comments about pivots. So all of these things you could reason through in logic on your own, but it's kind of nice for us to just summarize them and have them stated here. So if we have an M by N matrix where there are M rows and N columns, this can have at most N pivot positions. And the reasoning here is that there can only be one pivot per column. So we can have as many rows as we want, but we can only have enough pivots as there are columns. So if you go back through to some of the examples we just did, you can see that the number of columns dictates the possible number of pivots. So you can imagine here, if we have a matrix, if there are n columns, the ones along that diagonal are our only possible pivots, and so there are at most n pivots. Then we can make some conclusions that relate to the pivot positions in terms of our consistent and inconsistent systems. So first, matrices that correspond to inconsistent systems will have a pivot position in the augmented column, which is the rightmost column. So we saw this in one of our examples, but let's write it out here. So if we have our matrix and we're going just fine across the rows and we have our pivots, an inconsistent system will eventually have a row that looks like zeros on the left-hand side and then a one on the right-hand side in that augmented column. This corresponds to the statement zero equals one, which we know is not true. And so this pivot in the augmented column tells us that the system is inconsistent. Then we can also make conclusions about our consistent systems, specifically our independent systems with one solution and our dependent systems with infinite solutions. So matrices corresponding to independent systems will have a pivot position in every column of the coefficient matrix. So it won't have a pivot in that augmented part, it will just have a pivot in every column of the coefficient matrix. 
Here, this means that the number of pivot positions we have is equal to the number of variables we're trying to solve for, since each column represents one of our variables. So if we think about a general matrix here where we have the coefficient matrix on the left-hand side and then the augmented part on the right-hand side, the left-hand side has n columns, and if it's going to be independent where there's one solution, every column should have one pivot so that there are n pivots. By having a pivot in every column, we can't have a row of all zeros, and so we know that every variable has some sort of value assigned to it, and we're getting a unique solution, one solution to the system. Then lastly, this means that matrices corresponding to dependent systems will have fewer pivots than columns in the coefficient matrix. So rather than having the same number of pivots as columns, there's going to be fewer pivots than there are columns, or the number of pivots will be less than the number of variables. This means that some of the variables aren't being used, specifically there are free variables. And that's actually what we're going to talk about in the next video. So these pivot positions just give us more information and more ways to talk about a matrix, and that expands what we can do when we're working with these matrices. That's it for this one. Thanks so much for watching, and I will talk to you in the next one.